Hi everyone, my name is Sarah and I am making this YouTube video because when Zoe was first born, she's two months now, um, I typed in uh, how to take care of a newborn. And yeah, it was kind of embarrassing, but just, you know, knowing a little bit about me and my history, I didn't have a mom growing up. It was, it was my dad and my grandmother. So I was kind of nervous bringing her home for the first time, taking care of her because I, I was taking a bunch of, what was it, like four months off to uh, raise her and take care of her and my husband's in the army and any military wives out there know that they're gone you know a lot so I was really nervous and I, and I wanted some information and yeah you get all the information from your friends and of course every nurse wants to tell you their opinion but um, it it really you have to listen to your instincts you can do it I promise you it's been two months and yes it's hard um, but we're alive she's alive she's well she's happy she's a wonderful baby so um, I just want to briefly go over what I wish I'd seen two months ago and make my life a lot easier. Um, the first thing is the first week you bring them home, it's it's really hard. The first two weeks are like you really do you turn into a zombie because you don't get sleep. They're up every two to three hours, um, feeding you know just a little bit, so their stomachs are really small. I think it's like when you bring them home, it's like a large marble. I think that's how big their stomach is. Um, so it's, and their little bodies are working so hard to, you know, get the formula in and out and, you know, next you know they're hungry again. Um, they really don't play the first month they're home. Um, it's pretty much eat, sleep. Um, and my other suggestion for you would be try to sleep when they sleep. And I know everybody's told you that, but really and truly, if I could have done that, it would have been so much easier. Um, I don't know why I can't, I can't sleep during the day. I just, I can't do it. I don't know why. Um, the other thing I would suggest is when we were in the hospital, this was the first thing she heard, and it's the glow seahorse, and you press the tummy, and it glows, and you can kind of hear it. It plays like bubbles and it, nice soothing music. So this was the first thing she heard and kind of really got used to, other than myself and my husband. So she, um, she heard this, and then when we took it home with her, it was like something very familiar to her. Um, so if we put this next to her when she was sleeping, um, of course not too close, you know, she laid on her back, swaddled up, and we played this, and she loved it. It really, like, made it an easy transition from when she was first born to even now at two months, she still loves it. So the swaddlers, they have the ones with the Velcro on them. They are wonderful. I got mine at Target, and I should have bought more. Um, but she is growing out of them already. She's two months, and she's average. Um, I think she's like 12 pounds now. Um, and she's already growing out of them, so just plan for that. Um, so let's see. As far as food, when you bring them home, they have the Enfamil little bottles they'll give you in the hospital if you're not breastfeeding. I tried breastfeeding, um, and I really did too. I gave it everything I could, and so did she, but it was a either she wasn't latching or there wasn't anything coming out, and so she would get frustrated, and so would I. So we, you know, both of us just kind of stepped back and I tried pumping. So I pumped for a good month and a half and then all of a sudden I dried up and I, there's really nothing you can do once you dry up all the way. So I switched her onto Enthamil, the Gentle Ease one. Um, it was wonderful. It really kind of helped her out with gas. I noticed she had really bad gas problems when even she was on my milk. Um, and even on that top of that, sometimes if she was a really bad day, I would do the, I don't know if you can see that. It's like the Target brand ga gas drops. Just a couple of drops in, the, in a bottle. Um, and she's drinking now at two months, she's drinking four ounces. So, and these are the Nuke bottles. I really, 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 really recommend these. They have a funny shaped nipple and the flat part goes on their tongue and then it has this little air hole right there. And these are wonderful. The other bottles she couldn't stand, and it's, I think it's just comfortable for her. It, she doesn't, it's just, she's always eating, and it's a smooth process. She never doesn't take it. And the other bottles, I noticed she wouldn't eat as fast. So I recommend these. Highly, highly, highly recommend them. I think they're like orthodontic approved or whatever. Um, and then recently, we put a little bit, because she's getting older now, and she can take more um, down. But I was noticing she was spitting up quite a bit. Um, not only that, she wasn't. She still was going every like two hours eating and so you know she would get really cranky because she couldn't sleep. So I tried a little bit of the Gerber rice in her bottle and I know you're going to hear it from everybody. If don't do it, it's going to hurt them. They're going to have food allergies, all this other stuff. Well, I mean you have to remember a lot of us, my generation, I'm 23 years old. You know, way back when I was young, 
my dad did rice in the cereal. You know, it helps it for a couple reasons. It helps her not spit it up. So she kind of takes it down. And I don't put a lot in. I put maybe half a tablespoon to a tablespoon and that's it. And that, that helps her. So she, um, she takes that down and it's good. Um, and she's not allergic to it. You'll know it in the first bowel movement if it doesn't work. It will be like a diarrhea or, you know, constipation. And, you know, I was really careful when I first did it. I really watched her and made sure she was going to be okay. Um, and I do put a little bit more at night so she can get a good, you know, long rest. Um, she goes to bed. Let's see. Well, I'll go over the routine here in a little bit. Um, okay, so what else? So in the feeding, I would suggest um, you get a little tub and fill it with hot, hot, hot water and some sort of antibacterial soap. And get yourself one of these bottle brush. You swish it in there. Really, really scrape all that stuff out because the last thing you want is bacteria to get in there. And it's cool. It's on my sink, but the bottom pops out and sticks on your sink, it's like a nipple brush. So really, it's really important to clean them very, really, really, really well. Um, and the other thing too is the Colic Calm stuff. I don't have it here with me. It's called Colic Calm. It's got a little baby on the front with a little heart. Um, it works. It's really gross because it's like a black, it looks like nasty, like pitch black syrup that you're putting in your mouth, so you feel bad. But I actually tasted some and it wasn't that bad. It's actually pretty sweet. Um, on her really, really bad days, it does wonders. It really, within five minutes or so, like kind of calms her down. And if you have a colicky baby, they suggest you feed it to her just a little bit before her feedings every time, so it helps her digest um, better. So the other thing too is really important is diapers. Um, I'm really a big fan of Pampers. I don't really like Huggies. I tried them and they didn't fit well and I don't think they they work for her either. So she's still in a size one. I would recommend you buy size ones because she's been wearing size ones since we brought her home. And she was 6'10". She's not a big baby. So just save yourself um, save yourself the time. We just bought bulk ones. The other thing too is I do have a changing pad in my diaper bag um, for when we travel. But when we're at home, it's this sounds so funny, but I, I promise you this works. These little under pads, they're made for like people that kind of pee themselves in bed or whatever. These are amazing. You can put them on your changing table. They unfold and it's like the top's a diaper material and then the underside's like a plastic. She can literally make the biggest mess she wants to and all you do is bundle it up, throw it out. It saved me so many washing machine, washing machine trips. Um, another thing too is Desitin. Usually, if you're really good about changing um, them very quickly, like every time you know you're around them all the time, you'll know when she, you know, he or she poops. Um, change them as soon as possible, but watch your timing because I can't tell you how many first shots I had at changing a poopy diaper, and I changed uh, her very, very quickly, and she wasn't done. So yeah, uh, and expect that you're gonna get peed on, you're gonna get pooped on, you're gonna get you know thrown up on, you're gonna get all that. So. This stuff is good though, um, now that it's, uh, what are we in, June still, yeah, you lose track of time too, by the way. Um, she does have a couple of spots, put that right on there and then kind of seal it with baby powder. Baby powder was a big thing, especially when it's hot out. I use the gentle aloe, I think that's what it's called, soothing aloe and vitamin E, sorry. I use that almost every single diaper change now that it's hot. Um, I really didn't at first because she didn't need it and I didn't want to dry out her skin. So yeah. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, well, second to last, sorry, is when you give them a bath, it's really important that you know the first, like, couple of weeks you bring them home, all they need is a sponge bath. Their skin is so sensitive that you will dry it up very quickly. Um, but after, she, after the, I think about a, hmm, three weeks old, we had her in a bath. And I have this tub, it's kind of big, hold on. I have this tub the one where one side's for a baby, one side's for an infant, and it's got a little plug in it, so you can put it right in your sink, and it sits right up. Um, so she takes a bath every single night, and I'll talk to you about that at the very end on like a routine. And I put in, because um, she takes a bath at 9.30, I put in this stuff, it's lavender, it smells wonderful, and I promise you I noticed a difference the first night. She really did get a better sleep with this, and that's what it says it does. Um, and then, so that's, you know, nice soapy bath. Um, and then for like her face, baby's skin is really sensitive, especially on their face, just like adults. My, you know, skin up here is way more sensitive than anywhere else. Um, I use this. 
and you just take a little little soft um, washcloth and just a little bit and then take a little bit of water and then that's when you like get in their eyes wash their face um, and then you just kind of put it back in water and wash, wash it off so I don't wash her hair every night I do it about every two to three and this is the same thing I used to wash her hair because it's head to toe and it's natural so I feel like it, it's better for her and um, yeah she really likes her bath times and when she's done I have a little foamy pad that's on my counter um, I put her on that and I wrap her up right away even if it's hot out babies lose the body temperature really really fast especially um, when it's cooler out she's got one of these is my favorite because it's a little shark it's one of those towels so you just stick her head in that and you wrap her up and make sure you dry her completely you don't have to like scrub 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 just like pat her um, to make sure that everything is dry because that's really important then after I um, I use lotion and it's the same thing as the wash that I was showing you but it's the natural lotion and you use a little bit and you just butter them right up um, and then when you're done with that again I go back over with this just to kind of you know if I use too much lotion or whatever it will kind of soak it up um, and then I take baby powder again and I get on her tummy I get in her little armpit folds and especially around the neck their necks are like that like they're really squishy when they you know our first little ones so you really got to get in there and clean there and then that baby powder helps to keep it dry same thing with the diaper area um, if I notice a couple of spots after her bath I put this on then the baby powder and then she's done um, and yeah that's pretty much it and I feed her right after um, I usually warm her bottle up and I put her in her oh, got to show this her boppy this thing is a lifesaver that's all I'm going to say. I know there's a hundred people out there that tell you the same thing. And then the other thing too I forgot to mention was cloth diapers. I do not use cloth diapers for that reason. I use it as a burp cloth. They are like super absorbent and they're big. And they're actually cheaper than I found other like burp cloths that are burp cloths. And then the other last thing was the Nuke Pacifier. Again, it's got that funny little shape, but she loves it. Loves it, loves it, loves it. Um, get a pack and play. Those are amazing. And then also get one of the little... Jim's, as you can see, she's having a ball right now. And then the last thing I will tell you about is have a routine. Um, after she turned about a month old, I really, really, really kept her on a pretty tight schedule, eating every three hours on the dot, so 3, 6, 9, 12. And then, um, you know, I started noticing when she would go to bed around 9.30 to 10, she started doing a four-hour stretch, and when you get two to three hours of sleep, a four hour stretch is like, oh my god, it feels so amazing. Um, and then all of a sudden she started doing a five hour, and now a six. So now at, you know, two months old exactly, she sometimes sleeps seven hours, and that's amazing. It's, I never have trouble anymore, because I'm tired. But once in a while she will, um, she will wake up, like every two to three hours a night, either if it's too hot out, or if something's just a little different, I notice that she she um, wakes up and in her crib is the baby Einstein um, aquarium wonderful 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 so my last thing I'll tell you about is to trust your instincts you can 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 do this you can have a happy little baby she is wonderful say hi <laughs> she's wonderful I got really lucky with her she's not very colicky she's pretty easy going um, she kind of hangs out with mom all day so, um, the last thing too, sorry, I keep saying last thing, there's a lot of last things. Um, your memory does go. Make sure you write down lists. It really, really helps you. And you individually try to take out a good 20 minutes of your time. Whoops, you hit yourself right in the face. Um, try to take out some time of the day for you, like a nice shower, um, even reading a book, or just, you know, relaxing, listening to music. Because you've got to, like, grow with them, but you also have to grow without them, because you will start to go a little crazy if you don't. So, I hope this helps people out there. I know it would have been really, really helpful if I had had it. So, this is Sarah and Zoe signing off. All right, good luck. Let me know how everything goes.